Cadillac has a heck of an engine to play with these days. That's because their engineers took General Motors' naturally aspirated 3.6 liter V6 and swapped out most of the internal components before strapping on a pair of turbochargers. Drop that engine into the CTS and all of a sudden you've got a mid-sized luxury sedan that'll embarrass some of the best sports sedans coming out of Europe. So what happens if you put it into the larger XTS? That's exactly what we're here to find out today. Now the 3.6 liter twin turbo V6 that you find under the hood is an absolute gem. To recap, in the CTS it makes 420 horsepower and 430 pound-feet of torque, although in the XTS it's been slightly detuned to make 410 horses and 369 pound-feet. That's the only engine offered with the V-Sport model, which in turn is again only offered with all-wheel drive. Translating power between the engine and the wheels, you'll find GM's faithful six-speed automatic, although it's been modified a little bit for the V-Sport version. According to Uncle Sam, you should be getting 16 miles per gallon in the city, 24 on the open road, or an average of 19. Pricing for the boosted model kicks off at just over 63 grand, and the model I'm driving today is supposed to retail for just over 72,600. Now, if you can't already tell, the XTS is big. In fact, it's so big that it's a couple of inches longer than a BMW 7 Series, although admittedly not quite as wide. The V-Sport model comes standard with 20-inch painted aluminum wheels, and the more expensive platinum model that we've got here today comes with shinier polished versions of the same thing. It's also worth pointing out that this car has black diamond tri-coat paint that costs about an extra thousand bucks. Now, if there's one thing the XTS has in spades, it's road presence, and that's thanks to the angular styling and corporate face that it shares with the rest of the Cadillac lineup. Speaking of which, that brings me to the interior. If you spent time in a recently built Cadillac, then the XTS's interior is going to feel familiar to you. Of course, you have the hideaway cubby, you've got the Q infotainment system, and you've got Cadillac's standard layout steering wheel. Heated and cooled seats are standard up front, and the main rear seats are also warmed in every V-Sport model. Speaking of the rear seats, there's loads of legroom here, a full 40 inches to be exact. Now aside from rear seat space, there's one other attribute that the XTS really has going in its favor, trunk space. You get 18 cubic feet back there, and for some perspective, that should be enough to fit four golf bags. The XTS shares its platform with the Impala, and one of the things I love about that car and this car is the fact that there's a three-prong outlet available in the back. Now, speaking of the back seats, this car is also equipped with the optional rear seat infotainment system that includes flip-up screens in both of the seats. But what really stands out here is the premium upgraded leather that you get with the Platinum package. It's soft to the touch and is complemented by a micro suede headliner. But enough about all that stuff. This is a V-Sport model, it's got a twin turbo engine, so let's get out on the road and see exactly what it can do. It wasn't so long ago that a car with more than 400 horsepower was enough to make any enthusiast stop and stare. For some perspective, this car makes really comparable power to what an early C6 did. And to keep in mind, that Corvette came with a 6.2 liter LS2 that made around 400 horsepower and 400 pound-feet of torque. Now, I realize that comparing this car to the Corvette is really sort of silly, but the point is its engine makes an awful lot of power and it gives you plenty of forward thrust. And made it to the six-speed automatic transmission, it's surprisingly smooth. Perhaps more impressively, as you lean into the throttle, it doesn't want to shift an awful lot, and that's good because that power band is so broad, and, and as you tip into the throttle, you get a really linear sense of acceleration. But don't get too carried away because the truth is the brakes really aren't quite up to par with what the engine can do. What I really don't like is how the steering feels. 
out on the highway like we are right now, there's nothing wrong with it. But this is a V-Sport model, and to a certain extent, that would lend itself to the notion that it's sort of a sports-capable sedan. And the truth is, the steering feels artificial, and it really doesn't give you a very good sense of where the wheels are in relation to where your hands are positioning the steering wheel. But you do get these little paddle shifters behind the steering wheel, but they're only usable if you shift into manual mode. And that also activates sport mode, where the magnetic ride suspension stiffens up and you get a heavier steering feel, although the truth is this really isn't intended to be a sports sedan, so the fact that there's a sport mode in the first place is maybe a little bit silly. It isn't until you get on the highway like we are right now that this car really starts to shine because honestly, passing cars is almost a little too easy. I mean, you know, you just step on the throttle, you zoom right around them, it's effortless. You can also get adaptive cruise control. It's available on all of the V-Sport models, although it's standard on the Platinum car that we're driving here today. And having adaptive cruise control makes any sort of long drive or a road trip just so much nicer. It also doesn't hurt that the cabin is practically whisper quiet at highway speeds, so you can have a relaxing drive if you'd like, or you can turn up the Bose stereo and enjoy whatever it is that you like listening to. Of course, you can always just cut the music out altogether and listen to the engine sing. Despite the fact that this is Cadillac's largest sedan currently, the company refuses to refer to it as a flagship, and that's probably a pretty good thing. The XTS V-Sport is a heck of a highway cruiser, and it's got space to take you and three friends golfing with room to spare. Still, it's probably not good enough to compete with German products, and it's also not strong enough to put Cadillac in that tier one luxury category where they so desperately want to be.